heard a great quote that says, successful people don't make the right decisions. I'm originally from Beaumont, Texas, a uh, little town right outside of Houston. Great being raised in Beaumont, Texas, we grew up fighting. Uh, no one had perfect lifestyles. Uh, we all kind of came from a poverty stricken area. Uh, and you really just had to get it how you live. Uh, as a kid, since a young boy, I've been fighting. My dad boxed, uh, amateur. Uh, me, <laughs> me personally, I was just a hard headed kid. Growing up, Anthony was. I would say a problem child. He got into a lot of trouble. He was in elementary school, or in high school, or in He was very argumentative and very had a very bad fighting uh, spirit. You know, he was very protective. He wanted to protect his little brother, his little sister, even his big brother. And you know, my mom would pray for him, my dad would pray for him. He was just like my dad, but uh, that would always come out in the form of him trying to protect someone he loves. Uh, been knowing Mark, man, since he was in sixth grade, I wanna say. Sixth grade, I was in seventh grade. Been watching him, man, come up from when he started boxing, when he started a lot of things, you know what I mean? And watched him develop over the years and develop from a boy to a man. Starters. He was a little hot here. You know, he had a little tempo. Uh, stayed in all kind of trouble in school. Um, and one day, after well, after a bunch of fights, I got moved to another school, uh, and I had this one particular fight with a guy and his parents press charges on me. Uh, at the time, I was maybe fourth grade, so, and I was already building up uh, a record for being a bad kid, uh, a stupid kid. So, actually, uh, I had to go to juvenile court as a kid for this drug, drug my mom through all this. Uh, and in juvenile court, the judge sentenced me to do community service at the boxing gym. Uh, the boxing gym was led by Coach Jimmy at the time, the PAL, uh, Police Athletic League. Uh, and that's really why I fell in love with boxing. I was happy to see him start boxing because it, it helped channel that energy into a better place. Boxing pretty much changed my life in a few different areas. Uh, one, it made me a better fighter, but also it gave me more discipline, more understanding and it taught me to think. Oh, honestly, I didn't use those positive attributes in positive ways. Uh, initially, it got me into more trouble. Learning how to fight turned me into some sort of a bully, if, if you want me to be honest. He was a lot like his dad. And they never got along either. So we would always tell him, you gotta cut all this I, you know, listen. Growing up with him was challenging because we fought every day, pretty much. Um, that's my arch nemesis, but. <laughs> like in my nature, I was always pretty much a good guy, the, the caring guy. Uh, I was the bully to the bullies, if, <laughs> if, if you will. Uh, so being raised in Beaumont, you know, just like everywhere, we got the gangs, we got uh, a little bit of, every negative aspect of life. Uh, I chose not to partake in the gangs. I chose uh, to partake in other areas of the street life. Uh, by far was I a perfect kid. In fact, 
I was more on the wrong side than the right side. At a young age, start selling weed to buy me and my little brother shoes and kicks, the stupid stuff kids do. You know, I'm trying to buy shoes, taking penitentiary chances to buy shoes. At some point, my, my father found out that I was selling weed and kicked me out the house. Uh, I still help moms uh, with bills and whatnot, thinking that I was doing something noble, thinking I was doing something righteous. When I just, in, it was just, uh, just being a stupid kid. Uh, so time goes on and Pops end up getting diagnosed with cancer. Uh, at this point, I was really busting my tail in boxing, uh, grinding hard. I was making the grades in school and whatnot. Uh, but when Pops found that, got kicked out. I was living pretty much pillar to post, doing my own thing, hustling and, and whatnot. Uh, I even got a scholarship to Lamar University. But instead of taking that scholarship to Lamar University, being the rebellious kid or the rebellious person that I was, I chose to go to the Army. Uh, just being honest with you, me going to the Army wasn't a way of uh, saying I'm gonna do the right thing or whatnot. I know my parents wanted me to go to college uh, and I chose to go my own way. So I felt the Army would give me the the finances uh, and the, you know, just be, become even more independent to do my own thing. So, of course, I rebelled and went to the Army uh, and became a leader in the Army, a platoon leader. Uh, and the Army really showed me uh, a lot about myself. It showed me how I could stand on my own, too, and it showed me I was a, a little different from the average kid. I, I, I really didn't understand uh, my influence or who I was at all. I was just trying to get some money. Uh, but in the Army, uh, with everybody getting an equal amount of money at that time, and people looking to me for help, for help, people coming to me for help, it did make me reflect on the times in the street when everyone came to me for everything. Uh, not that I was better than anybody, but for some reason, people just came to me for whatever reason. Outside of boxing in the military and not having to go to work, I started my own like mobile detailing uh, for the sergeants and whatnot. Uh, so I would really just drive around. You know, y'all see the mobile detailing now. Uh, I had never seen it at that time, but I seen there was a need, seen there was a problem, I found a solution, and I got paid for it. So I started my fitness journey as well <laughs> in the military. I became a master fitness trainer in the military and started uh, really just helping the guys that couldn't make the PT test, helping guys lose weight um, and just get better uh, physically. Uh, I guess I just always been a natural motivator or encourager. At this time, you know, mom and dad was pretty much doing all right. So yeah, I was cool to go ahead and get out. Got out the military and thinking everything was gonna be sweet. I was just gonna go home become this professional boxer and everything was gonna be cool. But coming from the military, I couldn't really find a job or this or that. So, uh, you know, I went back to what I knew. So after the army, uh, going back into society, uh, start working offshore while I was trying to make my plan to become a professional fighter. Uh, had a pretty good amateur record uh, fought in the army, so, you know, uh, I definitely had action, knew I had skills. Uh, offshore took up too, way too much of my time, uh, so I had to abort that mission and really just get back and grind. Uh, back to Beaumont, to Houston, Beaumont, to Houston, three times a week, uh, going to Savannah Boxing Gym. Uh, but, you know, with no money coming in, uh, just chasing a dream, I had to make something shape. Uh, so I ran back to the street life. Uh, all the old friends or whatnot that I already had in plug. So I got back into that life. My crutch was just chasing money. All right, so along this journey, I started making a good bit of money uh, in selling weed, you know, dodo or whatnot. And I started liking the money I was making. I started making a substantial amount of money. Uh, 
And along this process, dad got sick, like even sicker, like with cancer. Dad got sick, I felt like I really just need to buckle down and stay true uh, to what I know I'm supposed to do. So, used my uh, Master Fitness cert and I went and got a job as a uh, personal trainer. I said, hey, just, you know, straight and narrow. As a trainer, starting off, is it, it, it gets a lot harder faster. Uh, so my money that I had saved up started dwindling because I wasn't in the streets anymore. Uh, dad's sick, so he can't work. Bills coming. Uh, just, just life started getting bad. I'm still, I feel like I'm doing the right thing now, and life is getting harder when I'm doing the right thing. At this time, I had a long-time girlfriend, uh, and this girlfriend, she actually. Uh, worked at the bank. So I knew pretty much everything uh, about the bank. And I, my streets, you know, I'm in the streets. So talked to a couple guys, let them know how everything worked. Uh, and pretty much put their plan in motion for them to go into the bank. But these clients of mine knew that I was training for my first professional fight. Uh, they had like a surprise meeting one night through this big party, inviting my dad, he could barely make it, he was barely walking at the time, how sick he was. Uh, and like, I think the donations, like they ended up sponsoring almost like 20, 25 grand, something like that, uh, to help with the expenses at the house, uh, to help, uh, you know, me go on and just push towards my dream. But the dirt had already been done. The plans had been set in motion. So I went back and tried to talk to these group of men to let them know, hey, like I'm good, like that's over with. Uh, and of course, they're like, hey, you got some money. We ain't getting no money. So me thinking I was somebody in the streets, uh, we started getting into it in the streets and whatnot. It died down and then maybe a year later, my girl came home crying, uh, telling me like she had been robbed or whatnot. And she, the way she told me she had been robbed, uh, I knew who it was based on uh, how it transpired. Uh, so yeah, uh, she was distraught. And to continue my avalanche of stupid mistakes, uh, stupid decisions, uh, I went to the guy's house uh, in the uproar, fought the guy, uh, did all this stupid stuff, uh, took some money from him, like just, just stupid stuff I was doing, uh, thinking I was somebody, uh, or not knowing my true identity. That's really what it was. Uh, I just didn't know who I really was. Uh, yeah, I was that guy doing all this stupid stuff that you see on the news every day. Uh, push came to shove and it, it, it died out. I guess just because I had a bigger bigger reputation or whatnot uh, in that field. Uh, so it, it died out, me and the guy, I thought we had reconciled six months to a year after that. Uh, I found out the guy uh, pretty much went to the cops because he got in trouble for something to get out of his trouble. He went to the cops and told them that I robbed the bank. Uh, of course it wasn't true, but at the same time, I did have my part to play in it. This played out in the courts and whatnot. Uh, the lawyers, my lawyers that I paid for, ended up finding out that I didn't rob the bank. At the time that the bank robbery occurred, the lawyers actually have me in my probation office, officer's office uh, because I was that stupid kid that was always getting into fights. So I was on probation for getting into a fight. Uh, and the exact time the bank robbery occurred, uh, I was in the probation officer's office. So uh, the lawyers, everybody thought this was not gonna go anywhere. I was in fact still getting, I had started prepping, getting ready for my first professional fight again because the lawyers told me everything was gonna be okay. Uh, and still, dad's health was still declining. Uh, so it actually fixed nothing. But I had this money, this money now that was given to me by 
my clients, I had to use that to actually try to fix my mistakes and that's the money that I had to pay to the lawyer. Trial goes on for 12 days and I get 121 months in federal prison. 10 years federal prison. You gotta listen, learn to listen to somebody. And if you don't, good law is gonna sit you down and make you be still until you do. And it just so happened, that's what happened. Having dreams of $100 handshakes and million dollar meals. I was sleeping on them snitches. But you know, I kept it real. But to a sleeper comes a dream, which could have been reality. But slippers come, my dude. Yes, I was just a casualty. Still a soldier nonetheless. In my heart, I know I'm blessed. But I'm from the school of hard knocks. My prison sentence, another test. Yet I'm an on the road that's on the road. Stand up and bang with the best. Cause ain't no love lived there behind them cold steel walls. Any respect you get, gotta be earned. All you got is your word and your balls. See, there's scavengers praying for falls. Short dudes trying to stand tall. Young dudes that got all day. While Christians preach and pray for a better way. But see, that's just a few faces. I didn't even speak on the racist races. The misplaced hate and the unjust cases. See, now it's real and it's unfair. I can't tell you where to go, but you better get there. My prison stand absolutely changed my life. Uh, this is a whole, whole segment of my life. Uh, I met some really good people. I met some really bad people. And I was put in a position to do uh, bad things. Uh, but maybe after my first three years in prison, uh, me doing a ton of foolishness, uh, fighting. And without him being around the house, it was just different. I mean, just different. It was lonely, but yet peaceful. And uh, all the writing the letters and stuff, it was, well, it was rough. It was really rough. I think at one point in time in federal prison, I stayed in the shoe or the hole or uh, what have you call it for like 11 months. Uh, that's when you stay in a room for 23 hours out of the day. They feed you through a slot. Uh, just based on my actions, uh, my mindset, uh, my lack of understanding. He ended up taken away from us, being locked up. And that was the worst. Everybody missed him. The teachers missed him. Uh, he was missed in the neighborhood. I mean, every chance that we got to go and see him, we did, wherever he was. And uh, we had to take the kids to see him too, and that was heartbreaking. During this time alone, I started to really uh, understand myself and process my thoughts and just really think about all the, all the things my father and mother had taught me. Like, think about uh, all the stupid actions, and then meeting the people around me. Uh, I had a 10 year sentence, but it was people around me every day that had 60 and 70 year sentences, uh, 20s, 30s, and 40s. Uh, and them just sharing their stories with me, and really just uh, speaking into my life, and really them just wishing they had a second chance. Like just wishing they had a second chance. Uh, a chance that I knew if I straightened up, I knew I could get it. Time-wise, because just because you go to prison don't mean you coming out of prison. Especially when you're in a, a federal USP. In prison, they want you to run with a, a, a geographical people and a race. I chose not to. I chose to say, hey, no, I'm a man. I'm going to move by myself. Uh, and, and that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and they let me know, okay, since you're moving by yourself, uh, so if you're getting a problem, that problem is definitely on you as well. And me, I'm like, shoot, I could fight, been fighting all my life. And they made me prove I had to fight, <laughs> that I could fight. <laughs> and I proved it over and over again. 
having that time to sit down and really just look in the mirror and look at myself and really reflect on my thoughts. A lot of people in prison are doing drugs to get by or doing this and that to get by because they feel as though life is over. Uh, but I had the understanding that even though I'm in prison, life is still going. That's where I really experienced true growth. Uh, I experienced true pain and hardship as well though, having nothing but moms and little sisters. That was my only friends, that was my only anything. Uh, dad ended up passing while I was incarcerated. Uh, mom ended up being diagnosed with breast cancer. Uh, thank God she beat it. Um, like I said, when my dad left this world, I felt like that was the only, excuse me. I feel like that was my last stronghold. My mom's always been there for us, um, but she's a lady, you know, and our job is to keep her safe and protect her. But as far as for him, he's been my rock through life, whether he knew it or not. And I feel like I'm the same for him. Um, but um, yeah, I love him. And there's there's nobody better. Um, he had a lot of things he went through in life, man. He overcame a lot. Uh, situations with his parents overcoming their health issues, you know what I mean? And, and being a, 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 a stone, a rock for his family. And I was determined, determined every step of the way to once I do get out of prison, those two people that was there for me like that, like, they got me. And I'm gonna make them proud. I'm not gonna be back in here. Cause in my 10 year sentence, I seen people come back four or five and 10 times. Uh, so I'm definitely made the decision that that wasn't gonna be my life. Met Mark, um, we did time together in federal prison. Three Rivers FCI to be exact. Uh, and there, you know, you size guys up before you just walk up on a person. We met in visitation. We stayed in visitation. Let that be known. Uh -huh. And uh, we went from there to working out together every day in a bond group, more as a, a brotherhood. And we, we use that today to work out and to see everything come to fruition. I remember he uh, didn't want to use the mob word a long time ago. And uh, I told him, you know, the mob word acronym actually is who you are. Because your name is Mark Owen and you're a boxer. So it only fit perfectly. The program in prison, they gave us these little purple books for you to journal in or whatnot. Uh, and so I used to keep this little purple book with me all the time. Um, but I wouldn't journal in nothing from this program. I was adamantly putting together my life uh, on purpose showing exactly what I was gonna do, making these plans daily, uh, in and out. I started reading a ton of books. I probably read a thousand books when I was in prison. When I learned about the vision board, on my wall became my vision board. In prison, it wasn't just my family, it was moms, uh, my sister, and my daughters. Everything else was exactly what you see today. I had a gym that I was gonna <laughs> live in on my board. I had a truck with my logos on my board. I had true ringleaders, my nonprofit, what I was gonna do uh, to give back on my board. So I started preparing myself to go home, preparing myself to be a man, but not any man, a man that was gonna make some impact, a man that was gonna help some little boy, some little girl, not go through that prison system. When he came back, and we were so proud that he handled himself the way he did when he was away. With all the anger he had in him, we knew something bad was about to happen. And it never did. Praise God, it never did. After getting out of prison, I put all this work in into myself. Uh, I learned that I had a talent in poetry. Uh, I started speaking in church. I started talking to individuals, but not to them nothing stupid. I like trying to motivate them, trying to encourage them. Cause I've been in there way longer than them at that time. So I was encouraging the young ones under me. Uh, so that day finally came for me when I uh, was able to get out, out of the prison system. But when I got out, nothing was the same. Life hit again, the halfway house. Nah, it wasn't what I thought it was gonna be. I had to do this, I had to do that. And that's where a lot of you met me at Leo or uh, Maine or just in the streets, like at helping, giving to the homeless. 
I didn't have anything at that time. I didn't have anything at that time, but I know my purpose. Now, when I entered the halfway house thinking everything was gonna be sweet, thinking it was gonna be, ah, I'm finally free. Nah, it wasn't that. It was a whole nother set of problems, a whole nother set of rules. Uh, so I literally had to sneak to go to work. Literally had to bust my tail to go help the homeless. Uh, like, <laughs> nothing is set up for you to win. And that's okay. Because if you're a winner, you're gonna find a way to win. The same thing I did before as a child, boxing, uh, the same thing I did in the military, the same thing I did in prison, it's the same thing I'm doing now. But now I'm doing it at a high level, giving it to you. Hey, what's up? This is Council Member Edward Pollard. We're here at the Mark Owens Boxing Facility in District J. I am the proud council member of this area, and this boxing gym has been a welcomed addition uh, to our area. Uh, we're celebrating one year that they've been here in our community, and not only are they here to strengthen for fitness, but also mental, also to give back into the community. As soon as Mark touched down, he started to get back out into the community, start to talk to different people at the schools, start to do outreach with the kids. And you see them all the time here at the gym, finding ways to stay productive, making sure that they are doing things that keeps them out of the streets. And so we welcome everything that he's been doing in the community. I can tell you his spirit and his energy is high. It's contagious. He even got me here. Almost every single morning I'm working out at 6 a.m. He's a great motivator, a great uh, man of faith, and it's great to be here with him today to celebrate one year. What I can tell you is Mark is someone who is spirited, who is grounded, someone who understands not only uh, business, uh, but the importance of community. And I just want to thank him for all the contributions he's done over the last year and look forward to many of the successes in the days ahead. Hey, I'm Corey Venison from Hollywood Motors, man. I've been knowing Mark for almost maybe 25 years, 20 years. I ain't gonna say our age. We've been knowing each other for a long time and training with Mark. Mark has a good heart. Mark gives back to everybody and do so much for the community. So a token of my love and my respect for Mark Owens and his establishment and all what you got going on, I am giving him a car. He always come to the dealership, look at the car, and I was like, man, I wish I had it, man, I want that. So I'm giving it to him for a token of all the stuff he do for the whole community and just showing love, man. Appreciate my brother you. for life, man. Appreciate you. All right, I'm swinging this time. Hey, Stein! <laughs> Mark Owens Boxing Gym, man. That's where the bosses of the city train at, man. Man, it's such a blessing to come from where I'm from. A little town, Beaumont, Texas, where we love guys like Zero. When Zero, uh, Zero album dropped, everybody on it. It's like when the Jays come out, you know? So, uh, Slim Thug, Boss Hog Outlaws, uh, all these NFL players and stars, you know, uh, comedy, like, to come from where I'm from, looking at these guys on TV, and then being in a position to actually meet and actually train these guys, get to know these people on a personal level, man, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like, I'm so appreciative. And like, I've met a lot of great men and women in my industry and outside of my industry. All the people I work with, uh, the Prince family. Uh, you know, it's been it's just been an honor. And I appreciate y'all. I appreciate all the support, everything y'all do, and I appreciate y'all coming through, man. Let's just keep building, keep working. Uh, so right now, my why in boxing, I want to take this knowledge and convert it into wisdom for these kids. The wisdom that I've amassed through the sport of boxing, through this journey called life. But I do believe kids are misguided and make a lot of stupid decisions, just as I have. So I want to use boxing as a tool, a tool to grasp these kids. My goal is not to make the next Floyd Mayweather. My goal is not to make the next Clarissa Shields. My goal is to make healthy, strong men and women. I feel like I'm one of the chosen. Definitely one of the chosen to use my knowledge, use my wisdom, to help. Mark Owens Boxing wasn't just birth to train uh, you football player, you know what I'm saying, you basketball player, or, or these corporate CEOs. Nah, that wasn't the goal for Mark Owens Boxing. I love y'all. I mean, I, I, I definitely believe that we met for a purpose, and that relationship is greatly appreciated. But Mark Owens Boxing was really built to help pay for my nonprofit, True Ringleaders. 
And true ringleaders is my baby. That's exactly, I believe that's exactly what God gave me, the mission he gave me to get out here and help these kids in these streets. Um, the main thing that sticks out more than anything else, man, I'm, I've been a trainer for now about 10 years. Uh, and I started training because of Mark. You know, he was training and doing his thing. And, uh, you know, before he left, he gave me his training, the training to study guide. And that started my training career. But when he came home, he told me, he was like, big bro, I'm going to do A, B, C, D. I was like, all right, do it. And he did it. He did it all just like he said he was going to do all the way until opening his gym. And I watched him do it, you know, step by step, exactly how he said he was going to do it. And, man, that motivated me more than anything else because you hear a lot of guys say that they're going to do this, say they're going to do that. But to actually watch somebody put it into motion after going through so many trials and tribulations and to stand up and do everything that they said they was going to do exactly how they said they was going to do it, man, that's a motivation like no other. And that shows you that anything is possible and anything can be done with some perseverance and some really, really want to. You know what I mean? And uh, to see it all come to fruition, like I said, to reiterate, is a, is a blessing. And even today, we walk the track and talk business. We go on our daily runs. That's when we discuss our business and our future plans for the future for the children that we don't have and children that we do. And uh, I just want to say congratulations and it's more and more blessings and I'm here through the end. Now, I watched him go through a lot of those things. Uh, personal issues, you know, coming just in life, you know, choices that he's made over the years, you know, and being able to bounce back from those things, you know what I mean? He, uh, he's just been a stand-up dude, you know what I mean? He's always had a good heart, always was a good dude. No matter what choice it was, it was a reasoning behind it, and he always came back from it, you know what I mean? So just watching him come through those things and come over those things, man, it's been, it's been a blessing in itself, and it's been a, a teaching point for myself as well. And uh, as the years went on, he learned to harness that uh, fighting spirit into what you have now <laughs> as Mark Owens Boxing um, and the true ringleaders and um, the forget it go hard today. But that's my right hand man. I love that boy to death. I die for him in any moment and he'd do the same for me. <laughs> There's nobody better um, to have took on this journey and become this traveling, this far, far crazy journey he's had and become the man he is today is just phenomenal and it's a blessing and we, we thank God for it. With the mob, man, the sky's the limit. Uh, we have a great group of people right now as far as the group of uh, trainers and the clients. The clients are awesome, you know what I mean? But I just see it growing, you know, like crazy, like wildfire. And in the future, you know what I mean, 10 years from now, I see franchises. I see it, I see it blowing up, I see it worldwide because the model we have and the way we do things, you know what I mean? Like, you don't get this type of workout nowhere. You don't get this type of mindset nowhere because it's more than just physical training. It's mental training here. You know what I mean? It's a lifestyle. People are really having life-changing moments. It's not just changing their body. It's changing their mindset. It's changing their thought process. So, you know, anytime something operates from that type of mental, spiritual, and physical aspect, it has no, no bounds. You know what I mean? Nothing's going to hold it. So, you know, I see it growing, man. It's the sky's the limit, like I said. Nothing can stop it. You know, when I say it's mob for life, it's mob for life. And we're going to be steady mobbing. Yo, Mark, keep up the good work. I'm hearing about, you know, all the good things you're doing in H-Town. So, keep it pop. Now that my band is back, he's changed a lot. I mean, he knows that he has a long way to go, but he's came so far. Everything that he wanted to do before he left, he has, you know, brought it to life. His dreams, his dreams is really coming true. I mean, he wanted to mentor. He started mentoring when, before he uh, left, but... Now that he's back, he's really putting it all in all into what he really needs to do, and that's to help the children, help the family, help everybody that he can live their life the way they should. And uh, I thank God for that. He has brought a lot of joy, and he's turned his life around. And... 
the struggles that he went through, that we went through watching him do all of the nonsense stuff that he did, and to look at him now and see that the man that he's growing up to be, to become, it's nothing but God. So I thank you, Anthony, for the life that you are now sharing with your family and the world. Uh, and boxing, it all goes back to boxing. My tool, I learned so much in boxing. Even though I've never been knocked out, I know and learn. If you get hit hard enough and you fall down, you better not jump right back up. If you jump right back up, you're gonna be disoriented and you're gonna make some more stupid mistakes, stu more stupid mistakes and you will not be ready. So once you take a hard hit, just like in life, if you go down, cool, cool. But get your bearings, get your stuff in order, and get back up and be prepared. I'm representing four incarcerated cons that religiously run marathons, but not in the name of fitness. He runs daily to visit that which he misses while trying to block out visions of his ex-best friend sleeping with his ex-missus. This is ridiculous. Because in prison, you don't get the privilege to shed tears to show emotion. You cry on the inside, which drown your heart, leaving no emotion. Hoping on court cases that keep us roller coaster. Praying for better days when our floors are wide open. How are we coping? With dreams of getting out and doing the big. But our dreams are what got us doing the big. We need to change it. Rearrange them to that strange life. It's still a struggle and strife, but not the same life. I'm talking about that nine to five day to day life. That minimum pay stay out the way life. You might think you lose a lot, but you sustain life. And life is what you make. That you in prison trying to fake it. Think back to the streets, but you mistaken. Nobody thought you was the man but you. Snickers and snitches and knock you on the canvas, dude. You out awake but in the dream state. Don't try to sell them to me. I got my own to make. Nobody believes you, so now you wanna retaliate? You better get your mind out of hell and fly straight. But if not, go ahead and accept your fate. Truth. <laughs>